Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about business logic, developers, and whether or not we still need to learn how to code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you think that we have started reaching a point where we have so many tools and libraries that developers are more or and more and more becoming just assemblers of these different frameworks and we actually focus more and more on just solving business logic as opposed to writing software. And the short answer is no, I don't think that's what's happening. I believe that we are in a we are in a perpetual uh, mouse wheel or hamster wheel where we just keep on running around over and over and over. Let me explain. So what I wrote back to the subscriber was that today there are more things for you to learn than ever before when it comes to software development. If you go and have a look at the desired skills, like the range of things a developer potentially has to know in order to work in this industry, it would include near on everything that you can imagine, pretty much all of it. You can, of course, narrow it down and then try to play the game a little bit and figure out which language you should pick and what frameworks are more important and popular and so forth. You can maneuver, but at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to a guess. That is not the case for quite a lot of other industries. If you want to learn how to become a carpenter or a, a, a construction worker or so forth, like there are, there, there is a range of things that you may need to know, and then you are more or less able to work in most most companies where this sort of thing happens. But this is one of those industries where you can go to two companies and the requirements for you on at each of them is going to be completely different from that of the other one. Now, we can absolutely agree on and say that, well, that's not really a fair comparison because the diversity is really, really high. So let's just focus on one specific thing. And even if you just were to, to focus on one specific area of software development, the requirements on your work is constantly increasing because as the subscriber pointed out, there are tools being created, but when there's a new tool created, well, then you need to learn it. And once you've learned it, the requirements go higher. The complexity of the applications that we are building are, is going up. It's not it's not we're not catching up we're simply pushing the envelope further and further we're we are chasing a carrot that's just continuously moving forward if you don't believe me have a look at how we do web work today for example it wasn't all that many years ago when a web page was literally html that's what it was it was a html page then we introduced the idea of style sheets and css and we had a bit of styling today we're building a native feeling application using all JavaScript and HTML now more or less for those sorts of applications has just become a formality. It's a bootstrapping thing. It's something, it's basically a compile target. And JavaScript has also in many cases become a compile target as well. It used to be that it was used for a few small things and today it's practically the entire application and you have megabytes of JavaScript that is required to produce something that is up to modern standards. And this continues. This is what I call the hamster wheel. Whenever you create a new solution to a problem, another problem pops up and it's perpetual. It's never gonna stop. That's the entire nature of innovation. It is, it is the essence of innovation, I would say. You invent something that solves a problem and then there's a new problem and then you fix that and then there's a new problem and it continues on and on and on and on. So um, I'm just going to say I don't think that we will ever get to a point where the developers can focus more on the business logic than they can focus on the actual coding and actually knowing the technical skills that are required to do that coding because if we ever got to a point where the only thing that really stopped us from implementing a feature 
was that we uh, was that we didn't know how to do it in terms of the business requirement then there would be no point for the developer to exist and that is something that we might achieve at some point i'm not sure that we will get to a point where this where code will never be written by a human more than of course if we do actually invent some type of ai system but if we get to that point we're way into a much much more elaborate society than I can possibly imagine. But at the very least, what I can say is that we might get to a point where the applications you want to build today are possible to build by a human. We are already there today, if you really think about it. We have WordPress sites and other low code solutions that makes it feasible for a person to produce an application of some type of uh, complexity while just knowing the business logic. You needed to still have some very basic coding skills. But that's not what we're making. That's not at all what we're making. Most of what the, uh, the serious developers are not making their money from making very basic things. They're making money from making very complicated things for companies who want extremely customized stuff that we don't have any off-the-shelf solutions for. And we simply aren't at the point today where we have been able to abstract entire industries and the needs of each of these companies into some generic platform that just a regular person can use. We are trying to get there, but unfortunately, that's a very, very hard thing to achieve. So what I want you to take away from this is that I don't think at all that we are approaching a point where a developer can focus the, is basically just someone who assembles together code and focuses more on the business logic we are actually farther away from that and then i can possibly then i think you can possibly imagine we are actually reaching a point where we are now having problems educating programmers that's a problem we haven't had even in the early days when the computers were, were, were very limited and there was highly specialized staff working with them. Today we have the reverse problem. We actually have such a high demand for people with coding skills and so few people that we can't keep up with demand. And it's not because we can't teach someone how to do taxes, uh, understand a retailing business or something like that that's not the problem we have salespeople that and, uh, and people who own the company who know all that stuff the problem they have is that they can't code the thing and that's exactly why we need developers and we are going to continue needing developers until we reach a point where our tooling is so advanced that you could in theory create an entire application without having any coding knowledge but it's not just any application it also has to be of a sufficient complexity and that's the key thing that's why i argue that this is a perpetual thing it's never going to stop because the perception of what is high quality and up to date is constant it's a moving target it continues forward the more stuff we build the higher the standards go and as long as that continues, we're never going to catch up unless we create a tool that is simply so advanced that it's so, so ahead of everything that it changes the entire industry. And I'm not sure that that's ever going to happen. It might, but if we reach that point, well, then I suppose that we developers will have to find some other type of profession because we should accept that we are basically just we're just a middleman. We're a middleman between the person who wants the idea built and the implementation. And if we can remove ourselves from that equation, well, then there wouldn't be much need for us to have the channel even. Have a great day.